Hi everyone, hope you're all doing well and today I'm going to be talking about Beyond Meats because the stock price had a bit of a crash this week due to some bad earnings. I'll be talking about Beyond Meats, going into detail and seeing if it's a good opportunity to go buy and I'll talk about if I bought the company as well. Now this is Sunday's video so there is a chance that later on today I might be doing a live Q&A special for my 5,000 subscribers. Um, so just keep that uh, your eyes open for that one anyway guys uh, and thank you so much once again and uh, if you could smash the like button just like how you've been doing previously to get me to 5,000 uh, subscribers that'd be absolutely amazing and we'll take a look into Beyond Meats. So just a quick backstory on the company if you don't know basically what they do is they offer plant-based uh, food uh, like other meat options but obviously made from plants uh, and they've got very good reviews they're uh, being very highly regarded they've got uh, they say they're very good tasting and yeah it's just a, another option to basically eat meat which obviously is probably better for your diet and also you know as a sustainability kind of point of view you know having you know very good for the environment as well now the stock ipo'd in may 2019 so uh, the lockup period would have been earlier on this year and there was a couple of insiders selling out because of that lockup period which kind of made sense and um, so yeah we kind of passed all the kind of ipo uh, drops and everything like that and volatility and the stock has gone up a lot and it has had a, a lot of drops very much uh, what you would expect from a kind of growth company like this you know to get kind of hyped up and then obviously to slump down a little bit very but what we were kind of used to for a lot of uh, growth stocks and like i say I'm, I'm very happy to buy ipos after nine months because then you get the lockup period and you normally get a dip like i said the lockup period has passed on this one and it hasn't been on the stock market that long and as a company as well it's a pretty new company so they've done very well to scale up like how much they have done uh, for being quite a new company really now the company did hit a 52 week high of about 197 and that was only about a month ago really so uh, since then the stock has dropped about 35 percent some of it due to earning some other stuff related as well and um, so yeah the stock was 197 dollars at 52 week high only a month ago and then bang we're down 35 percent now trading about 124 dollars as recording this video and the ticket symbol for this one was bynd now like i said there was a general sell-off and then we had a big massive drop about 22 percent drop and this was because of earnings now in the earnings it went on to go say about how um the food service because one thing with beyond meats is that it has its retail products so it sells you know it's plant-based beef burgers it's sausages and everything like that it sells it through a lot of you know retailers supermarkets and it gets a lot of revenue from there but the one thing that it does make it very different is they also can then also sell its meat and have partnerships and something like a dunkin donuts for example and it can sell some meat to dunkin donuts and they can offer plant-based products on their menu and there's a plenty of other partnerships that we'll touch you on in a little bit but so it also has its retail and you know selling its products and everything like that and also it has very good partnerships and allows a lot of these food service companies to have a plant-based option on the menus and like i say that that gives it kind of two different revenue routes it has going on at the moment and it went on to say that the food service was not very good because obviously you had a lot of restaurants closed footfall not being amazing and then to top it off it had a lot of overstocking from retail so when the coronavirus hit a lot of people went to the supermarkets started overstocking a lot of food and everything like that overstock overstocks like you know the, the beef burgers and everything like that and you know bought loads so they, they had enough there for quite a few months so they've had slow kind of retail ser uh, sales and then also bang you got a lot of food service down and that combination really did kill beyond meats in this earnings and it's something that we can kind of probably see for the next kind of maybe six months but realistically is this probably going to be a long-term problem for the company probably not we you know food service should probably go to the same uh, and restaurants will start picking up and you would think that the, you know the overstocking or the overbuying of products in the retail space you know eventually people will eat through them and then we'll, they will need some more so first off we can see this is probably more of a short-term issue and when we think about buying a company for two to five years is this really going to affect them probably not but it's given a good, nice opportunity in this company and because of that problem what it led to is that uh, beyond meats had a lot of uh, stock being held there because obviously food service didn't need stock retail didn't need stock so it had a lot of stock that it needed to ship off as well selling that off at discount prices and it just in general is a big combination that ended up killing the company which weren't great and that is the main reason we kind of got a big massive drop into this company but overall if we look at you know how the company's done this year fantastic company you know 
The food service, we'll just ignore it this year because it's a bit of a write-off for it. But when you look at the retail sales, I mean, over a nine-month period, it's still given US retail sales of 114%. International growth, which I still believe that this company has only just, you know, early days, it still has massive potential to ramp up that international retail. And that's up 134%. I mean, as someone from the UK, I hardly see Beyond Meats in many supermarkets at the moment. Uh, and you think about the more products it'll bring out, the more you know deals it'll get, the more it will have more factories to produce it. Massive, massive growth potential. So you can see that the numbers are great and I still think they'll ramp up. Now, there is a few negatives with this stock that I'll go through. So first of all, when we look at the stock, 7.8 billion market cap. You know, it's a, it's a decent price. You know, we're not talking about a, a tattoo chef that's, you know, around about the one, one or two billion. You know, 7 billion is quite an expensive company. Um, so yeah, you've got to kind of factor in, are you paying up for a lot of growth or there's still a lot of growth in here? You know, it's not a it's still, you know, it's not a massive, massive company, but, you know, 7.8 billion, you know, it's not it's not cheap for sure. A 20 price sales ratio, that's pretty expensive. You know, I, do, I like buying growth companies, but I like them when it's probably under a 10 price to sales ratio. We're talking about a 20 price to sales ratio. Now, this has dropped because it used to be 30. So it is coming down a little bit here, uh, but it's still a little bit too high. Uh, well, it's, it's quite high. I mean, um, a little bit lower would be ideal, but still, we've got to factor in, you know, a company that is growing at this sort of massive revenue, how cheap are we actually going to get it? And another negative is this company is a little bit hated on the stock market. You know, there's certain companies that take a lot of stick. You know, we talk about Tesla in the early days, Pinterest in the early days, even something like a Dropbox. You know, they hate companies and there's a lot of haters out there. A lot of people pushing their agenda that have short interest in the companies. And that's something you've always got to be careful of. So I've got to say there's kind of them three negatives that did stand out when I was looking into this company. Now the positives. Um, first of all, Market leader, massive, massive control. It's one company that has a lot of good products that are out in the retail space, but also it's got very big major brand de deals out there. And these brand deals are gonna help it. And it controls such a big, massive mark, uh, segment in this sector, which is massive. And I think the branding is great. I think something like this is always recognizable. So I think from the marketing uh, leader point and the branding, it's pretty much untouchable in this sector right now. The growth, the growth's gonna be absolutely fantastic on this company. And like I say, at some point, you do need to pay up for growth companies. And when you look at the future of this company and you think about some of the potential deals they have in place, this is a company that's gonna be growing revenue and profit in a major, major way. And it's gonna scale up really, really fast. So we've got a great growth company here. Balance sheet, very, very good balance sheet. There's quite a bit of cash on there. Uh, very healthy on the debt side as well. So um, yeah, I mean, balance sheet, we're still in a pretty solid place as well, which will also help the growth. And the sector, let's talk about the sector. You know, more and more people, uh, you know, wanting to come to this kind of environmental way of eating. It's, you know, it's been pushed quite a lot. We also have a lot of people that want to, you know, balance out that diet a little bit, take a little bit of, you know, red meat out there, for example. And yeah, I mean, it's a growing sector, you know, this sort of industry is massive growing and um, it's why I have shares in Tattoo Chef, which I'll talk in, on a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, in an industry point of view, it's a very fantastic industry to be in. Um, let's think about international growth. International growth is going to be huge. You know, this is pre doing pretty well, well in like the US, but hard, you know, on the international side, it's hardly pushing out right now. You know, we're looking at it potentially building two factories in China. That's going to help it massively. That we'll talk about the Starbucks deal in China in a little bit, but you know when you think about it, it'll start building more and more factories. That's going to help up you know growth. And when these Chinese factories are done, that's really going to help it in China. And uh, you know, let's face it, you know China could do with a bit of help with uh, what foods they certainly eat, especially over the last kind of six months. But yeah, I mean, is that's you know going to help them in the international growth, building more more and more factories. They've got some China factories being built, which will help them in China as well, which is great. And let's talk about a lot of these deals it has in place, you know, something like, you know, let, fair enough if it was a company with just, you know, being in the retail space and selling in supermarkets, but this company is landing massive, massive brand deals one after another. You know, we've got Pizza Hut deal that's just been announced. They've got something like 16,000 stars. We've got Starbucks. I think they're something like 24,000 stars and, you know, that's in uh, China as well and that's why they're building the factories to help with some of that Starbucks production as well in China and as well as their supermarkets. Dunkin' Donuts, we've got something there, KFC. Um, so with these great deals, it's going to help them, you know, with them orders, you know, they're going to get food service orders as well as retail, which is a very good combination. And as well as that is when you think about it, you know, Beyond Meats are going to be branded in Pizza Hut. They're going to be branded in Starbucks. 
even if they don't make huge profit on a lot of these food services, what it's going to do is it's going to give them mass, mass amount of branding. You think about, you know, having branding in 16,000 Pizza Hut stores. Think about having your brand in 24,000 Starbucks stores. The branding side of this is huge. And this is something that not hardly any other companies are going to be able to do. You know, I'm a shareholding tattoo chef and I think it's a great valuation, especially when you compare it to something like a, for a, a, a uh, compared to a Beyond Meats, for example. But no way Tattoo Chef are going to, you know, they're, they're always going to be retail. They're always going to be ready meal. You know, they're, they're never going to be able to be on the scale of what Beyond Meats is. And this is why I like Beyond Meats and this is why I think it does trade at a bit more of a valuation. They have major, major deals that will help them through advertising, give them another income stream. It's huge. So some of these brand deals they have in place are going to be massive. And I think like more and more of these brands will want to have more and more plant-based things on their menu. So it's great from that point of view. Now, one of the other last things I'm going to say is McDonald's. This is one of the big things that are going on here. So McDonald's have confirmed they're looking at adding a Mick plant burger to the menu. And this is going to be in 2021. Now, there's been rumors that it's not going to be on Beyond Meats. And then it is going to be Beyond Meats. So that what happened is because it got named the Mick plant burger, it sent the stock down a little bit because it thought oh beyond meats have no part in this and that's going to mean beyond meats missed out you know you think about being in mcdonald's the advertising you know being in thirty-four thousand stars would be massive for beyond meats and because it got called the plant burger people thought right they don't have a deal with mcdonald's so that's going to be a killer for beyond meats but then we did get some information about this so what was said from um Beyond Meats is that both Beyond Meats and McDonald's worked, co-created the plant-based patty, but that part was likely the one that shouldn't have been said out loud. McDonald's hasn't publicly confirmed the partnership and CEO Beyond Meat, Ethan Brown, tiptoed around the subject. By the way, I'm going to say that Ethan Brown, you got your founder there, great management team as well in this company, around the subject when he appeared on the Jim Cramer's Mad Money, Mad Money on Tuesday. I believe our relationship with McDonald's is very strong. We are involved with McDonald's on a number of different fronts. We're doing things now to prepare for things in the future that involve McDonald's. I just can't go out and speak for the company as to which supplier they've chosen or who they're going to be working with. All the investment we are making here, all the scaling we are doing would suggest the relationship with McDonald's is really strong. That's really all I can say. So it seems like they're being very conservative, but it does seem, I mean, McDonald's, Beyond Meat have been working together. So I'm sure, you know, Beyond Meat aren't doing this for free for McDonald's. I'm sure there's something in there, whether it be, you know, a royalty or something on them lines, I'm sure Beyond Meat are involved in this somewhere. It seems very clear that there is, and that's massive. You know, whatever it is, you know, advertising point of view or a bigger menu point of view, we know it seems like there's no confirmation, but they are somewhere working together, which is huge for Beyond Meat. And like I say, you know, when you think about how many stars McDonald's have, this is a game changer for, for Beyond Meat. So it does still seem very positive and I'm sure we'll get more and more details in 2021 about this, but it's great to see that it looks like there is some sort of partnership here if they are working together to create the, you know, the plant-based patty. And you think about, you know, McDonald's, how long it would take them to create something similar. It does make sense for them to go to Beyond Meats. And like I said, Beyond Meats won't be doing this for free. So there will be something there for Beyond Meats, I believe. And I, I think it's something we'll probably hear more of in 2021. So overall, when I look at Beyond Meats, I'm looking, yeah, it's a bit of a valuation, but you've got a market leader here, great management team, very great growth in a growing area as well. There's also, when you think about the retail space, which is good, but when you think about, you know, when you think about them Pizza Hut deals and McDonald's deals, that's another side of the company that's gonna scale. And let's think about this. This is good. This is the, an international company. You know, this is just early days for this company. It's got massive, massive scale potential here. And you think, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a valuation and it's, uh, you know, 7.8 billion market cap, but realistically, this company could become a huge company. If it can deliver all these partnerships and carry on scaling through retail, this company could be a, you know, a 30 billion market cap company in the next five years. And sure, it's a longer term hold, but I'm looking at this company now and thinking market leader, great segment, great growth partnerships. It seems a pretty decent company to me when you think about the growth potential it has. And so for me, I think there could be, you know, 200, 300% upside in this company in the next five years. And I've been saying for a long time, we've not had a company that's dipped off earnings and come, come a good buy for a very long time, but here we go. This was potentially the one. So I did pick some shares up even Beyond Meats. I did buy some shares and I probably will carry on buying shares while it's down below $130. 
it just seems such a massive growth potential to me with a lot of these partnerships and the way it can scale up. And yeah, anything under $130, I will probably carry on buying. Hopefully it stays down here for a, a few months that I can carry on building this position. Could come a big position in my portfolio and I am a big fan of it. So I look at Beyond Meats, massive potential for growth over the next five years. So I was picking some shares up in this company. Now I know some of you guys will think, well, I do own shares in Tattoo Chef and I still think that's a great company, great growth, but that's gonna be you know ready meals, re retail space only. This is a company that's gonna be a market leader in a big growing area that has the potential to become a very, very big company with a big massive market cap. So, and you know, Tattoo Chef can't do them sort of corporate deals as something like what Beyond Meats are doing. And I think Beyond Meats at this sort of valuation, pretty cheap, you know, you look at that discount now and look at the growth ahead of it. I did have to buy some shares in this one. So yeah, I have started buying some shares in Beyond Meats. I will probably buy a, a, probably a few more over the next few months as long as it stays at these sort of prices. Uh, and yeah, I really like the company. I think it has massive potential over the next five years uh, when it starts building up a lot of these corporate deals. And yeah, I'm a massive fan. So yeah, I did buy some Beyond Meat stock and it's the first time I bought for a few weeks as well. So hope you enjoyed this talk about Beyond Meats anyway, guys. Smash the like button. If you are new around here, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.